Hello, this is Hadi Lisha from DocWireNews.com. Uh, we're here. We're very delighted to have Dr. Niall Borges, a CTO expert um, and fantastic operator, to give us some uh, tips and tricks on his thought process about coronary microcatheters. Uh, so, uh, good evening, Dr. Borges. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank, thank you so much, Hadi. It's uh, great to be on the on your show. <laughs> and uh, look forward to an interesting discussion. So uh, first of all, you know, the first thing that comes to mind, if I'm a middle career, kind of late career operator who have been doing this for, let's say, 20 years, and I'll tell you, you know, we've done all of this without coronary microcatheters. Try to convince me why this is essential to today's interventional practice and what is a microcatheter for? Sure. So, you know, I think for someone who's been doing it, let's say for 10 or 15 years, I think most people would agree that the complexity of disease we deal with today is significantly greater than what we probably dealt with 5, 10, 15, and certainly 20 years ago. And I think that has created an onus on operators and on industry and as a field to improve the technology we have to meet the challenges at hand. So the majority of PCI 20 years ago and probably today too is being done in a traditional way with a wire followed by a balloon, hopefully followed by intravascular imaging and then a stent. But I think there has always been a subset of patients that you couldn't get the wire to go where you wanted it to go. Or if you got it there, you couldn't pass a lesion that you got to. And that led to frustration sometimes, led to increasing aggressiveness with stiffer wires when the issue really was that you just didn't have enough support at the lesion. And not to forget that stiffer wires come with often greater complications, higher risk, especially when used in an ad hoc way. So I think the old and traditional workaround for this has always been to use an over the wire balloon. And functionally what that is doing is it's giving you support at the lesion, some flexibility in the ability to exchange your wire, reshape your wire, but it increases your toolkit at the lesion and allows you then hopefully to be able to cross. I think the development of microcatheters is an elegant way to replace the over the wire balloon, but also to facilitate a whole additional lit options um, to be able to do different things with that, that type of technology. You know, I think over the wire balloons work well, they're cost effective, um, but they're limited in what their ability is to deliver to the operator. And that comes largely because, A, you don't have a marker at the tip. So you're not totally sure sometimes where your balloon is, which can increase the risk of complications. And they're not particularly rigid or supportive. And so you can kink them, you can damage them, and then you end up using multiple balloons. So I think the recognition of the limitations of wire technology, as well as the increasing complexity of patients and the demands of what it takes to revascularize some of these patients and lesion subsets is what actually led to the development of microcatheters as a solution to problems faced in everyday PCI. Fantastic. So such well said. So if I need to summarize what you said, basically more support, torque control, delivery of equipment, and uh, crossability. Um, basically, yeah. um, uh, kind of in a nutshell. So in your mind, tell me, how do you think about microcatheters? How do you divide them up in your mind in a simplistic, pragmatic, practical way? Yeah, so I think, you know, when it comes to interventionalists, there are two types. There's the lumper types who think of things in groups, and then there's the splitters who focus on every little detail between things. I personally am more of a lumper, so I like to think of things in big groups. So when I think of microcatheters to simplify it, because there's so many options on the market now, I think of really five things that microcatheters provide you. So there's the wire exchangers, that's number one, where the goal is I need to get a wire down that's different than the one I have, whether that's for support, whether it's for atherectomy, there's a lot of different scenarios where you need a, a different wire than the one you have. So a basic lumen that allows you to exchange a wire. The second is a wire enhancer. What I mean by that is it allows you to retain the function of your wire, which is otherwise lost due to tortuosity, 
due to the position you're working at or more tip load. So for example, a three gram wire without a microcatheter is a three gram wire. A three gram wire with a microcatheter two millimeters back from the tip is a seven, eight, nine, ten 10 gram wire. So it drastically increases what your wire is able to do at a short distance from the microcatheter. The third then in my mind is a wire duplicator. So you have a wire down, you wanna deliver a second wire either into a side branch or penetrate a cap in a CTO. So my, certain microcatheters like dual lumen microcatheters allow you to multiply the number of wires you can have in a coronary without sacrificing any particular wire. The fourth group then are plaque modifying microcatheters. So things where you have a wire across a lesion, but you need to modify the plaque to be able to cross. And there are purpose designed microcatheters that we can certainly discuss that where the intent is to actually modify plaque, whether it's calcium, fibrotic tissue, lipid, to facilitate a channel through there that then allows the delivery of further equipment. And then the final group is microcatheters that allow you to, to deliver other devices, whether it's coils, whether it's drug, whether it's fat, thrombin. Again, they serve the purpose as a lumen that allows you access to a distal bed. So I think of five different functions the wire exchangers, enhancers, duplicators, plaque modifiers, and then other device delivery.